Hi, my name is Cameron Krause with AnimeLocation.tv. I'm here at MatatsuriCon 2018 with Samurai Dan and Jillian, who have made me giggle and laugh for so long, and it's been just only a few months since the last time we got the chance to talk to you guys. It was at ColossalCon just a few months ago. How have you guys been in just a short period of time? I'll pass the mic to you guys so you can talk. Do we have to talk as fast as you were? Because I'm not sure I can keep this up through the whole question. <laughs> we're doing well. We've had a very busy summer, um, but... It's been very fun and very neat, and we're excited to be back at MatsuriCon. Uh, kind of going along with what we talked about from the past interviews, uh, again, the puppy over here has, uh, again, tried to mature a little bit. How has he been doing? And on top of that, the family job of speak of helping you with uh, the items that you need the puppy for. His maturity level has passed mine. Yes. I mean, we were kind of even last time I saw you, but his training is advanced beyond mine. And in terms of what he's actually training for as a medical alert dog, mm -hmm. he, he, we couldn't be happier. It's amazing. Um, he actually alerts. It's weird because he's working on being a medical alert for diabetics. Mm -hmm. He alerted at an event with the groundskeeper, the person who owned the property we were at for the event, wow. was having a blood sugar crash. And he went over and alerted for him. And we're like, oh, we got to get this guy some food. And he's like, why is your dog all over me? And he was diabetic. He was crashing. So I think we were going to rent him out. <laughs> you may not rent out the puppy. Well, they wouldn't let me rent you out. <laughs> you may not rent out your wife or your helper either before you go there. <laughs> Never going to get out of debt. <laughs> I think that's a wonderful story to hear that he's already uh, been able to help someone. Is that that's actually pretty wonderful? Um, so again, you guys had last time we had discussed, we had um, talked about audiobooks. How's it going for you guys? And have you picked up any voice training from any one of the several uh, voice actors you happen to know at all the many wonderful conventions you attend? He's still doing that with the answers or the questions. The speed reading. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> when Jill said we've been really busy lately, the truth is we have been. We've been so busy. The the audiobooks would be a which is a totally new direction for us. This isn't something that we've done before. So it's been kind of pushed to the back burner with some personal things, and and all of them are good actually. But we kind of got pushed back on that, so we haven't gone anywhere. And the only thing we have gotten um, voiceover advice from friends since we perform at so many anime cons and a lot of the voice actors are familiar enough with us to say, Danny, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I might be stepping on toes doing audiobooks? Actually, they're highly encouraging you to do audiobooks, just not character voices. <laughs> Which is good, because I have enough voices in my head. <laughs> Alrighty, and uh, you guys are just a wonderful group of people, and you guys love bringing your st your. St <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've always wanted to be plural. <laughs> Uh, you guys love bringing your stage shows here to uh, different conventions. And last time when we talked at ColossalCon, you were testing out some some shows. How have you been able to incorporate them here at MatsuriCon? You realize we haven't done any events yet at MatsuriCon. <laughs> So we don't know how we're going to incorporate them. <laughs> it, it should be it should be fun. Um, we weren't actually here last year, right. so this is kind of a Refresh. return for us. So we have the uncensored comedy show tonight, which is just a collection of really embarrassing stories of stupid things I've done, just limited to the anime con experience. Otherwise, there's no way to get all the material done in time. Uh, we, we had, had that class. panel once at a convention and it was scheduled for an hour and at like an hour and a half we're like are they going to kick us out of the room and the convention chairs were sitting there like no no there's nothing in the room you can keep going three and a half hours later no one left. yeah with three and a half hours of embarrassing stories i'm finally like guys we have to go get some food we're uh, we're really sorry because nobody would leave either <laughs> they which wouldn't be so bad, but after three and a half hours, I still had embarrassing stories to tell. From events. Yes. Yeah. And what about any other types of shows that fans are going to check out this weekend? We have a ninja sword class tomorrow that I'm Sunday. actually looking for. We have a ninja sword class on Sunday. You can edit this and make me look better, right? Nope. Maybe, maybe put Bryce's face on my bot, but that would be awkward. Okay, how about Jeremy's face on my body? Though? That'd be even worse. <laughs> Now appearing in Longmire, <laughs> Samurai Sheremy. 
What? She Longmire was, was a TV show. It was about a sheriff in Wyoming. It was a Western themed thing. It was really cool. And our friend Jeremy Lee was in it. Yep. Yep. And, uh, you know. I'm an advertisement for other guests. Yeah. <laughs> We've actually interviewed Kaza many times. Um, she is. She's wonderful. Yep, she is. She even puts up with Dan. Which is impressive. So, going to talk some football for our wonderful fan, Miss Jillian here. You love Aaron Rodgers, and if he were to stay healthy all year long, do you feel he truly could get the Packers back in the Super Bowl? Absolutely. Aaron Rodgers wants to go all the way. I think it's really going to come down to the team and the players around him because it's it's, it's just all about hard. The secondary yeah. for them this year. If Rodgers exactly. stays healthy. They'll at least make the playoffs. If the secondary comes together and stays healthy, they're a legit challenger yeah, for the Super Bowl, I think. Even though the Eagles are loaded, the Rams are loaded, the 49ers are going to be sneaking up on people. It, it's going to be fun this year. Yeah. And the Vikings, you know, they went out and got my <laughs> favorite. That, that was the next interview question. <laughs> uh, uh, my favorite part is that, uh, you know, the Browns just happened to help, you know, with that Carson Wentz thing and that collarbone, you know. I love the Browns, you know. The 5-0 win in a preseason, you know, you can't get over that. Dan, you love your NFC North, and you love your Vikings that are also Super Bowl contender, but <laughs> the Lions <laughs> maybe make a run for the against the Bears who go up an even 8-8. Go for the NFC North. You really think the Bears are going to go 8-8? Eight and eight? That was him. All the preseason <laughs> hype, and in two preseason games, their offenses look just as lost with the new head coach and all the infusion of talent. I mean, preseason, you can't always tell. You love the Cleveland Browns. You remember last year they went 0-16. Do you remember what they went in the preseason? 4-0. Successful preseason means nothing. It's like being popular in kindergarten. It doesn't translate to high school at all. Especially if you act like you did in kindergarten. Well Not that I'd know. But <laughs> NFC North, honestly, the Vikings are going to be really hard to beat. Um, but I'm still thinking if Rodgers stays healthy and the secondary for the Packers holds up, I think the Packers win the NFC North. I'm saying 12-4 and four mm. out on a limb. And I'm going to put the Vikings a lot lower than I expected, but I'm going to put them about 10-6 and six, <laughs> along with Detroit. I think those two teams are actually going to fight for a wild card spot, nice. and they might actually be both wild cards. It could happen. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to put the Bears. It's still rebuilding. I know they're excited about the new coach and offensive coordinator and everything, and they have the makings for a good defense, and they've got better players on offense, but I'm still going to put them 5-11 yeah. at best. It's the Bears. You heard it here first. <laughs> During preseason. During preseason. During preseason. <laughs> all righty and kind of following up for uh everybody uh other than the audiobooks that we've talked about last time and the puppy getting his training are there any other upcoming uh projects you guys want fans to know about that we can eventually hear about <laughs> my wife has a new obsession <laughs> my wife has started doing cowboy mounted action shooting this is where people dress up like they did in the 1800s oh, wow. oh, okay. and ride horses at breakneck speed down courses that are set up yeah. and shoot balloons with 45 caliber single action revolvers oh, sweet. and it's a timed event and it's terrifying that my oh, wife awesome. is well the the terrifying part is i just got a new horse and the horse just happened to be trained in cowboy mounted shooting so she took him i stole the pony <laughs> and i will never get my horse back you might but Cowboy mounted shooting. So if you want to talk to Jill about horses and firearms and in one go. and balloons, yeah, it's like Stephen King is in there somewhere. Kill the clown. The... <laughs> <laughs> this is why they give you blanks. This is true. Here, I'm going to give you the mic, and I'm going to play with the table that they gave us just because it's as unbalanced as our questioner. <laughs> we can give him back the mic. <laughs> you should talk about cowboy mounted shooting. Yeah, go ahead. See? It's ridiculously fun and addictive. I grew up riding horses and barrel racing and lots of competitive timed events and team penning and working cattle and stuff. So 
and then we are licensed firearm instructors so mm -hmm. like out and so like time. this whole being able to blend them and mix them together and dress up in costume i mean it's it's kind of addictively fun and now i have a whole new it's like basically wild west cosplay on a horse with cool guns and like which six shooters do i want and yeah it's it's really not safe <laughs> all right now because we love you guys so much where is there a way to keep up with you guys online and again any messages you would love to give to the fans that have just come out to one of your shows i would say first of all for our fans if you're watching this interview this is a good time to remind you don't do drugs <laughs> Oh. You see what happens. <laughs> oh, we're, we just love the community. We love being out here. The puppy is loves you so much you've worn him out and he's now passed out on my feet. <laughs> and we are this on Facebook. Plug. Yes, Facebook. <laughs> Samurai Dan and Jillian. We do have a Twitter account, but we don't log into it very often. I'm very oh. bad about staying up on Twitter. But yeah, we, we do answer questions and stuff and, and try to keep our Facebook page maintained. It doesn't work in California right now. Bad dad. That's the interview done. <laughs>